let's learn about the remainder theorem. For example, let's use the remainder theorem to find p of 1, where p of x is equal to 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 9. Now the remainder theorem states the following. If a polynomial p of x is divided by x minus c, then the remainder of that division is p evaluated at c. Let's think about why this is true. By the division algorithm, when we divide p of x by x minus c, then p of x is equal to x minus c times some polynomial q of x plus a constant r, where here q is the quotient and r is the remainder. And the reason this remainder is a constant is because it has to be one less in degree than this divisor here, which is of degree 1, so r would have to be of degree 0 or a constant. Now let's evaluate p at c. That is, p of c is equal to, we're putting a c everywhere we see an x, so it's c minus c times q of c plus r, or p of c is equal to 0 times q of c plus r, or, sure enough, p of c is this remainder r. Let's apply this to our problem. We want to find p of 1, so our c here is equal to 1. So p of 1 will be the remainder when we divide p of x by x minus c or x minus 1. Now we could either use long division or synthetic division to divide, but let's use long division here. Now x goes into 2x cubed. 2x squared times, and 2x squared times x minus 1 is 2x cubed minus 2x squared. When we subtract, we get negative x squared minus 9, and x goes into negative x squared negative x times, and negative x times x minus 1 is negative x squared plus x. And when we subtract here, we need to be careful. Let's think of there being a plus 0x here. So when we subtract, we have 0x minus x or negative x. And then we still have the negative 9. x goes into negative x, negative 1 times. Negative 1 times x minus 1 is negative x plus 1. And then when we subtract, we get negative 10, which is our remainder. Therefore, p of 1 is equal to this remainder, negative 10, which is our answer. Now we can check this answer by plugging this value 1 into our polynomial p. Namely, p of 1 is equal to 2 times 1 cubed minus 3 times 1 squared minus 9, or 2 minus 3 minus 9, which sure enough is 2 minus 12 or negative 10. Let's look at another example. Again, let's use the remainder theorem to find p of negative 3 where p of x is equal to x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 5. Again, in order to find p of c, we divide p by x minus c, where here in this case, c is equal to negative 3. So we would need to divide our polynomial by x minus a minus 3 or x plus 3. Again, in order to perform this division, we could either use long division or synthetic division. 
Let's use synthetic division here. So we write our C, negative 3, and then we put all the coefficients of P, namely 1, 2, negative 4, and now be careful here. Remember, it's mandatory that we hold the place of the x and write plus 0x. So we have a 0 and then our 5. And then we drop the 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. We add, we get negative 1. We multiply, we get 3. We add, we get negative 1. We multiply, we get 3. We add, we get 3. We multiply, we get negative 9. And then we add, we get negative 4. Now remember, with synthetic division, this last number here is our remainder. Therefore, that is p of negative 3 by this theorem. So our answer then is that p of negative 3 is equal to negative 4. Again, we can check our answer by plugging negative 3 into our polynomial here. Namely, p of negative 3 is equal to negative 3 to the fourth power plus 2 times negative 3 cubed minus 4 times negative 3 squared plus 5, which is equal to 81 minus 54 minus 36 plus 5. And minus 54 minus 36 is negative 90. So we're left with 81 minus 90 plus 5, which is negative 9 plus 5, which sure enough is equal to this negative 4. And this is how we work with the remainder theorem. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.